Johns, and I want to begin with the, with the normal greeting that I always give you on Sunday mornings. The Lord be with you and your responses, and also with you. So welcome to St. John's. We are so glad that you're connecting with us. I am Pastor Jeremy Schultz, and on behalf of the worship team and everybody here at St. John's, we wish you every blessing from the Lord who is the great I am. Got just a couple of announcements for you before we begin. First of all, we've been talking about making a difference and allowing the Lord to make a difference through you. One of those ideas that we've given you recently is by helping out the Arnold Food Pantry that has uh, serious needs. Normally, we buy groceries and we bring them here to St. John's. What we're inviting you to do, however, is go to our website and click on the quick links and you'll see a list of items that the Arnold Food Pantry needs. And then you can drop them off there. You don't even have to get out of your car. Every single morning of the week, uh, six days a week, not Thursday, from 9 a.m. till noon, you can drop off those items and you can make a big difference. You can be a difference for people in need. Next thing we want to give you an opportunity uh, to learn about are script sales. Now, what are script sales? Well, well those are... Uh, uh, certain denominations of Walmart, uh, Target, Amazon, and Visa that you can purchase and you get the same amount that you can go shopping with, but then a portion of that, it really helps our school ministry. Now, we, we normally uh, uh, make those available for purchase on Sunday mornings after worship, but uh, since we're not gathering here at church, we want to give you that opportunity. So by Sunday evening, if you could put in your orders online uh, using the email address below to our school, and then next Sunday, uh, there is, these pre-orders will all be packaged up for you, and you can drive through from 12 to 4, drive through in front of the school, and they'll connect with you. But we'd invite you to do this, and in this way, be a big support. Make a difference for our school ministry at St. John. Tonight we continue with uh, Jesus, the great I am. Tonight we learn that he is the door and through which we find safety and security and life. God's blessings to you, and let's begin our worship with this first song.
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Together, then, let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen, and thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the door to the sheepfold and all who ever came before you were thieves and robbers. Please lead us into your presence this very day and by your holy word, give us safety and security and a life that never ends. For you, O oh Jesus, live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, our great God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our scripture readings, and today they are going to be read by one of our high school seniors, Grace Carty. Our Old Testament lesson comes from Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered, on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines and in all inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading comes from Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings, and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to Glory you, to you o, o Lord. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. Christ. We now invite, invite the children forward for the children's message led by Pastor Andy Becker. 
Well, come on up, everybody. If you want to get a little closer to your uh, screens, that whatever you're watching the service on today, I thought we'd uh, start by singing a song together today. The words will probably be very familiar, although the tune might be a little different. So please join along as you're comfortable. loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. alleluia. Jesus loves me, he who died. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gates do open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little child come in. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let's sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Saved a wretch like me. Once was lost, but now I'm found. Once was blind, but now I see. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I love that song as uh, we sing about Jesus' love for us. We, we know how much he loved us because he died on the cross to save us from our sins. Now today we're talking about how Jesus is the door. Uh, Jesus is the door to, to bring us into heaven, into right relationship with Jesus again and with God again. And, and Jesus does that by dying on the cross for you and for me, by forgiving all our sins and bringing us into his Father's house where we can love and serve and be with him forever. Let's go ahead and pray together. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you so much thank you so much for being my Savior. You love me, Jesus. You died on the cross, and you brought me into your Father's house. Thank you so much. I love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and sing our next song together. Oh, 
just absolutely takes my breath away. To be honest with you, I was going to begin this message with a joke that seems wholly inappropriate now at this time, having experienced that very powerful song, I Am, realizing that we are right in the the first third of this sermon series through the great I Am statements of Jesus Christ. I just want to start telling you about him. And today, he tells you, I am the door. He says that all who enter through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and they will find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Doors, of course, uh, serve a a very, very important function. They swing wide open to let friends and loved ones in, and then, of course, they also close very tightly to keep those same friends and loved ones safe. And Jesus says, I am your protection. I am your safety. I am your security, and I am your life. And when Jesus says, I am the door, Well, he's got this kind of a picture in mind. It's a picture out of the first century when when shepherds would, during the summer months, take their, their sheep out away from the towns and the villages and let them graze in the open pasture lands for weeks on end. And while they're doing that, the shepherd, well, he would be gathering together branches and brambles or maybe rocks in this case building a makeshift pen for those sheep to be there and rest at night. And then, as you see from this picture, the shepherd himself would lie down across the opening. This is the image in the mind. He himself, the shepherd, we become the door of the sheep. And if the sheep at any time during the night were to get out, well, they'd have to cross over the body of the shepherd. And even more to the point, I believe, If any wolves or any predators were to try to sneak in and try to capture those sheep, well, they too would have to cross over the body of the shepherd who himself is the door. Well, you can see from this picture that the pen is no prison, but neither is it a permanent residence. Jesus says, those who enter through me will come in and go out and find pasture. So the sheep pen, the sheep fold, well, that's, that's a place for wounds to be healed and mended. It's a stopping off point for the night. It's a place where the sheep can, can get their rest before the next day's grazing really commences. It's a place for the, the sheep to be secure, protected, loved, and, and cared for. Jesus says, I am the door. And if Jesus is the door, then then we are most certainly the sheep. And if we are the sheep, well, then all of that begs the question, where do we go looking for our safety, our security, and our life? Well, some would go looking to their bank accounts, I suppose, In good times or in bad. (laughs) In good times, you start to feel like you're indestructible. You know, your income, your lifestyle, your your general well-being, it's all on the rise. It feels like you can't be conquered. And then there are those other times, maybe times like we're in right now, where we don't feel so indestructible anymore where some people are having their hours cut or they're losing their jobs. They're not quite sure how they're going to make ends meet this coming month. There are others that are looking toward retirement and now aren't so sure because of the big hit in their retirement savings through the stock market. There's all kinds of parents with little children, and all of a sudden their immediate and and future financial well-being is called into question. You see, in good times or in bad, sometimes we look to our bank accounts for this safety, security, and life. 
But Ecclesiastes chapter 5 sort of helps redirect our focus. It says there in Ecclesiastes 5, whoever loves money never has enough. And whoever loves and seeks after wealth can never get enough of their own income. This too is meaningless. And friends, if the Bible calls such a pursuit meaningless, then I guess we really have to reevaluate whether our bank account is where we ought to go looking for our safety and security and life. Some would say it most certainly is not. In fact, they would sort of redirect our focus and say, you should look to the government for such assurances. And the way that attitude might play out is perhaps like this. If only my preferred political party gets into power, if only my candidate wins the election, then all of our troubles will vanish. But if and when those troubles don't vanish, I, I guess then we still have the other political party or, or candidate to blame. But is that really where we're going to find our safety, security, and life? The Bible all over the place. And Psalm 146, for example, says this is not where we are to put our trust. Not in the, in the leaders of the world. Not in the strength of man, but in the power of of our God. Jesus says, I am the door, and he who enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out, and he will find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Let me just put those words on the screen one more time. What Jesus is saying in, in this passage is that he's all the protection that we need. He's all the safety, all the security that we will ever have a need for. Jesus won't break. He won't bend. And so when thieves break in and try to steal away, anything that's been granted to you from above, you can be sure that Jesus will put up a fight and he will win. He is your God, the great I am. And the reason I can speak so confidently to you today like this is because this door was fashioned from wood and nails. The strongest stuff imaginable. And when Jesus died on the cross for all of your sins, well then, that curtain, that door, if you will, that was in the temple and separated the, the holy place from the most holy place, that, that curtain, that door, if you will, it was torn into, signifying our complete access to the Father through Jesus and when Jesus cried out on the cross, it is finished. He, he meant just that. He has taken care of everything. He has secured a spot in his eternal mansion above for you and me and all who would belong to him by faith. This is so sure and so certain and was made so because on the third day, you might recall that great big heavy stone that acted as a door that was rolled up in front of the, the tomb of Jesus Christ while on Easter Sunday morning that was tossed aside like a play toy. And Jesus emerged victorious. I am the door, he says. And in Jesus, you have safety and security and you have life. The story is told of a of a woman who found herself on a, on a commuter train, as was her custom. She was on her way to work one morning, and, and this woman's countenance, it was absolutely miserable. She was a deeply troubled individual. Well, that day, by God's grace, she met a brand new friend on the train, and this happened to be a Christian woman. And they struck up a quiet friendship and an 
even quieter conversation. She entrusted her new friend with all of her troubles, and she began pouring out her heart as she told her of her little girl who was crippled. Every morning before she got on this particular train, she would make her daughter breakfast, and then every night when she would come back, her daughter would be there to greet her, and she would spend the evening in her company. This little girl was her life. And this little girl sadly died. A home just wasn't home anymore. As she began to explain it. So she felt like she had everything, everything just stripped away from her. But her new Christian friend gave her some really good advice. She said, when you go home tonight, and just as you put the key inside of the door, know that and think to yourself, you're going to meet Jesus on the other side of that door, so extend your hand as you come through that door and say, Jesus, I know you are here. And then later on, as you light the fire and you sit down, talk to him. Reach out your hand, say, Jesus, I know you are here, and then speak to him just as you would to your little girl. And if anyone has been kind, tell Jesus about that. And if anyone has been unkind, tell Jesus about that. And then when you go to bed at night, just before you close your eyes, reach out your hand and say, Jesus, I know you are here. And then go to sleep in his perfect peace. Several weeks later, the two of them, by God's grace, met again on the same commuter train. Only the woman's countenance was completely changed. She didn't have the the look of a a horribly afflicted and terribly troubled woman anymore. But her countenance was that of perfect peace. It's because Jesus is the door. And just as that woman who met her on the commuter train would go in and out and find pasture and and would go back out and and take that assignment and meet that troubled woman and give her that advice, now, now this woman knew what it was like to enter again into the presence of the living God, to come in, to have her wounds tended and mended and healed, to find rest and shelter for the evening, to come in and out then and find pasture, but to find in Jesus her safety, security, and life. And friends, that's what Jesus, the great I am, is for you. In the midst of all of the the troubles of this present day, where are you going to find your safety, security, and life? In Jesus. Only Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding, guard and keep you in that perfect peace to life everlasting. Amen. At this time, would you please join in with me as we confess our Christian faith in these ancient and sturdy words known as the Apostles' Creed, and we say them together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in in Jesus Jesus Christ, his his only Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Holy christian Christian church Church, the the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen thank you for saying those words of faith with me and whereby you encourage those in your own household in this faith in which we believe in our triune god father son and holy spirit well as we transition into our time of giving today i want to thank you for your ongoing gifts to the Lord. And I want to encourage you that if you haven't started giving in this new season, this Easter season, but also um, this new season where we're worshiping from home, I want to encourage you to do that and be blessed 
as you worship the Lord in this way, as you honor him with your first fruits, and as you bring those uh, to the Lord's house, either through online or through texting or by mailing in those gifts, uh, know that God's people are encouraged. His uh, witness is spread, and uh, God's people you yourselves are also blessed. I want to tell you some really good news. I got a letter from Hand in Hand Pregnancy Center this week. Uh, you may recall we did the baby bottle boomerang a couple of months ago. Well, through the generosity of our congregation, uh, through all that loose change in those baby bottles, that amounted to a little over $4,000 and I thought that was awesome. I was just absolutely blown away. That's $4,000 worth of diapers, uh, $4,000 worth of baby formula for needy families, uh, families in a, in a tough spot, uh, very often under-resourced and choosing life uh, as God has given it to them and blessed them with. So God bless you also, and thank you. May God bless you during this time of worship. Who has the power to raise the dead? Who can save us from our sins? He is our hope our righteousness Jesus only Jesus who can make the blind to see who holds the keys that set us free he paid it all to bring us peace Jesus only Jesus transition into our time of prayers today. Got some really great news to share with you. I just learned from Concordia Seminary that we are going to be assigned a vicar for this upcoming year. 
So that's the really good news. Um, they're gonna get a great experience here. Vickers are uh, student pastors in their third year of seminary education. Gonna get a great experience here from all of you at St. John's, but also from God's people at Emmanuel and Barnhart because we're gonna deploy that vicar there uh, in a very intentional way to help us build up that congregation per our vision here at St. John's, our two-year vision called Arise. So if you would like to tune in, Tuesday night is your night at 7 o'clock. You can see what vicar God is bringing to us at St. John's, and also you can find out where our former vicar, Austin Wellhausen, goes for his first call. We're certainly excited for all the young men and the ladies, the deaconess students getting their assignments through Concordia Seminary. It's going to be a joint service at 7 o'clock. Just get on their website, Concordia Seminary St. Louis, and you'll be able to watch along. And uh, now let's take all of our uh, concerns to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the door for your sheep. Through you, we come in, we go out. We find pasture, and we experience the blessings of safety, security, and life. Please bless all who are gathered with us today. Strengthen our faith and our witness of the risen Savior, so that all might enter life through you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you tell us in your word that the fields are white for harvest, but the laborers are few. Please inspire young men and women for service in your church and bless the upcoming call day at Concordia Seminary. We thank you for Austin. We ask you to bless him and his family as they receive their first assignment through your church. And bless our upcoming vicar and his family as they are placed among us. Build up your people in the true faith, both at St. John's and Emmanuel, and keep us in your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please be with all who are sick, and especially we pray for Jenny Helton, Cheryl Williams, Merlene Schmidt, Pat Drentloss, Cindy Telly, Matthew Schwantner, Cheryl Vaughn, Marilyn Coker, Debbie Wagner, Terry Helton, Jessica Hagen, Patrick McNally, Katie Ritter, Paul Kinzer, Michael Kaiser, Johnny and Sandy, Orlando, Lauren, George Azani, and Steve Rosh. Lord, give them the strength to meet all of the challenges that they face. And we pray that in your way and in your time, you would enable them to overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, please bless our school at St. John's and all schools of our community, all young people and teachers. Strengthen them for service in your world. Be with our missionaries in Africa. Bless our partnership with the Arnold Food Pantry and Hand in Hand Pregnancy Center. Bless the work of Care Connections and be with all first responders that you might bring us all safely through this challenging time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And it's your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sure has been great to worship with all of you wherever you're at. God's blessings to you, to your families, to your neighbors, to your community. As you go in and out of the Lord's presence this week, know that you never really leave his presence. Not even when you come into these times of intentional fellowship with Jesus, with our God through that door. But we pray that as you do come and in and go out this coming week, that that the Lord's travels may take you to people who have real needs, that you might encourage them with your Christian witness, that you might be with them, proclaiming to them that Jesus is the door, and in him we have our safety, our security, and our life forevermore.
Receive now the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.